Hi there, I'm Lydia and on Typical Books today we're going to do part 8 of the bookshelf tour, the weirdo pile. Now as you can see, this pile of books that is features in, in most of my videos because it's to the side of me and it's not I'm not in front of it. So you may have looked at some of these tiles before. I'm going to quickly go through all them. I'm not going to pull every single book out because it's a lot of miscellaneous uh, sex stuff, garbage books, and how to write things for journalism, uh, nonfiction and fiction too, and just general grammar rules and garbage like that. Not very interesting. So I'm going to rip through these two and this little stack here with a little bit of like TBR actually on that. My books are a mess, I, I admit it. And then when we're done all this, we're going to head upstairs and do some more miscellaneous stuff. I really need to organize my books. Okay, you will notice a little bit of books up top. I'm going to see if I can tilt back here that have changed. It's a little bit of my TBR up there and stuff that I've just read. And I neglected to mention my V.C. Andrews collection. That's one shelf that I forgot. So that will be the next bookshelf to a video before we head upstairs as a matter of fact. So these are some more miscellaneous. I know I've had a lot of miscellaneous shelves. It seems all my shelves are kind of miscellaneous. So if you're a better bookshelf arranger than I am, just leave me some tips. No one has yet. And believe me, I'm open to it. Unless you really don't mind this sort of mess, right? So we're going to take everything out first, and then I'm going to pile everything back in. That was a chore. Okay, so Standing on the Shoulders of Giants, History of Statistics, Canada, 1970 to 2008. It is a book from my workplace, so it's not really um, a typical book, but I mean, if someone was really interested in the nonfiction of Statistics Canada, it's a wonderful coffee table book, quite honestly. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, I believe it's only available by contacting uh, Statistics Canada, but it is a beautiful book nevertheless. And continuing for power nerds only, uh, Prescription for Nutritional Healing is a textbook that I refer to over WebMD, quite honestly. Uh, multiple sclerosis, poisoning, shingles, stress. They've got herbal remedies for pretty much everything. It is maybe an outdated version of this book. If you're interested in this sort of thing, this is the Bible as far as health, food, homeopathy, things like that. Horror Hospital. It's actually confused and more than a little lost. Trevor Machine, teenage frontman for the up and coming indie rockers Horror Hospital, walks a rocky road toward fame and fortune. It is a dirty little book. Uh, the art is fantastic. Like I, I truly love this story and I love the artwork within it because it goes between so many styles depending on the psyche of Trevor Machine. And uh, yeah, wonderful, funny, profane and touching. That's pretty much it. This has the naked lady. <laughs> Screw the roses, send me the thorns. Romance and sexual sorcery of sadomasochism. This is more sort of, um, I'd say, reference reading than anything. And this is in there only because it's really about the same size as the previous book, uh, Hindenburg Mechanicsville. This is an area that I used to live with in Ottawa, and this is a wonderful history book that was compiled by a local about that particular uh, part of town. How to Be Kinkier, More Adventures in Adult Playtime by Morpheus. This is the second book in a series. Uh, I went to a, a talk that Morpheus gave, a very intelligent individual. This is his first book, How to Be Kinky by Morpheus, Beginner's Guide. Another signed edition. Um, a friend of mine has uh, her photo in this. A few locals have their photos in this. Wonderful book. This is Taximani, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Inuit Myths and Legends. And this is a borrowed book from Stephen Lowe. I need to return this quite badly, but he had lent it to me. It's in, I guess, Inuktitut. I'm not sure what of the two languages that are predominant in Inuk, but it is a beautiful storybook of all the different legends and the art is amazing. You can get at a lot of these stories online as well. J'aime vous? This is, um, I'm published alongside Harlan Ellison, which will always kind of freak me out a little bit. Matt Moore, Stephanie Vitovich, other names, Jessica McHugh that you may, um, under, that you may recognize from Postmortem Press, which is recently defunct. I got a biohazard specimen bag in here. I'm not sure why or from where it came. But there's me, the medium as a mirror. That's a non-fiction piece that I wrote that is in here. Another edition of Teksumani, Inuit Myths and Legends, and it has some 
beautiful, beautiful art in this. And this was all just fodder for some stories that I want to write dealing with not necessarily these myths and legends, but drawing on the monster pool. A copy of Black Static, another copy of Black Static, and that rounds out this pile. I was doing a little straightening to start because this is just rickety. Odd Man Out by James Newman, fantastic book. Um, if you're looking for a summer read that has to do with boys in camp, this has something to do with that. It is very heavy though, I will say. A little, a little brutal. Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe, the play. It is a fantastic little copy and I have read and reread this a couple times. I used to like going to the cafe to read and reread this. A small strange little book called The Animal Kingdom and it is falling apart. It is a weird little illustrated pocketbook that just detailed some random animals. It's a zoological text. And let's see the date. It is by an Alice A. Davidson, October 1869. And when I first picked this up, um, it had 40 scribbled in there. And I was like, oh God, please tell me this isn't $40. It was 40 cents because it is so beat up and I don't know if it's worth much more than that. I really don't know much about old books, but that is very old. So if anyone knows anything about the shilling books, then uh, let me know. Castle, Peter and Galpin, London and New York. Zoology, specially classified and arranged for the use of science classes, schools and colleges. This is an elementary textbook at this size. Like it is literally a pocketbook. A book that looks a lot older than it is, Shakespeare's Sonnets. My sister had got me this uh, ages ago. I don't know if it was a, um, I forget what this was. This is when I moved here. She got me another small book. So it's just a cute uh, little addition to the sonnets. If you ever want to go on a, on a picnic and read some poetry to someone, this is a easy little book to carry and I really enjoy the binding because it goes well with my textbook on zoology. This is another cute little book. It's very hard to make out what looks like the Taj Mahal on the front. Uh, so it's a beautiful work of embossing and it is to Christopher on his 30th birthday. Not my Christopher, a different one with love from Michael. So it's a beautiful book that was once a gift. Oh, it's St. Peter's Cathedral. That's what's on the front. Oh, it looks so much like the Taj Mahal. Oh my gosh. Modern Architecture. This book is 1866 and it's in very good condition. Uh, if it wasn't some scuffing here and there, you know what I mean? It uh, definitely probably would be worth more than I paid for it. And I believe I paid a dollar for this. And it was just to get it off of the stack in the bookstore from whence it came. So there, yeah, beautiful little book. Okay, and this loosey goosey little shelf is again, not quite as much miscellanea, although you will notice this is not a book at all, but a um, collection, a VHS collection at that of the Nine Inch Nails nine inch videos. Okay, we're going to go kind of quickly here because I'm not going to pull all these out now that I flip some of them around. The CP style book that is for journalists in Canada, as opposed to the American press style. This is psychological measures and emotion from a developmental perspective state of the science. It is a very dry thesis about what that just said using alternative therapies. These are reference books entirely. If I ever need to write about a doctor that is dealing with abnormal psychology, I suppose. Character, Emotion, and Viewpoint. This is a book from the Great Fiction series, or Write Great Fiction series. And it has been kind of indispensable because I myself don't have a big, a big range of emotion. And I'm not very emotive, so in my writing I try and elicit a bit of that. This is Slow Reading by John Medema, and I have love this book. I've read it a couple times. I was just thinking of John today, in fact, because I'm going to be doing a video on editing and it made me think of him. 
This is about reading analog, reading slowly and reading in a way that we purely digest what we're reading, understand what we're reading and feel what we're reading. His small book on this topic has been in my thoughts since I picked it up and since I've met John. So, I mean, this was a fantastic idea and I wish that more thinking would go into, you know, this, the slow food movement, the buy local movement, those sorts of things. This goes right part and parcel with that. So if you're interested in getting more out of what you read, maybe take a look at slow reading as a movement or slow reading this particular book. Art, the Art Community and on the Law, that was a textbook when I took graphic design, so it's very old, kind of outdated, but it gave me a real idea of how I ought to be operating in meat space. Uh, first aid book, handy for horror writers. Caps and Spelling, this goes along with the Canadian Press Style Guide, it's more of a quick reference. Do Good Design, now this is about accessibility in design, which is something that I think my website is lacking and I feel kind of badly about because there is a huge movement to not only do this when you're mandated to, but to do this for the betterment of all. And yeah, Do Good Design is a David B. Berman book. Very good book. What was I on writing and Strunk and White, The Elements of Style? Now, Zinsser's book on writing well is indispensable. What was I is a grammar book that is, I'd say, indispensable, but if you're going to pick one of the two up, uh, Zinsser's book on writing well, and Strunk and White, The Elements of Style, anyone writing nonfiction just better write the, pick this up, let alone fiction. You know, it's all helpful. The DIY Newsroom is an interesting book, and it's really topical, I think, if you are doing stuff like we are here on YouTube, making channels and being a brand, and all of those buzzwords that people love or hate, this kind of helps distill all of that, especially if you are somebody who is doing your own promotions, marketing, things like that. Whether you're doing this for an artistic reason or a purely business reason, this is a really good book to sort of have the touchstone for all of that. And a touchstone for me, no matter how un-PC this is, I think that it has some very good etiquette for humans in it, The Book of Modern Manners and Customs. This is an ancient book with ancient ideas, but some things just never get old. The most vital point of etiquette concerning a dinner party is over and out of the way before the dinner begins. It is this, be punctual. Etiquette for humans. Okay. I'm just going to show off some of these as they fall over. The Book of American Types, as you would guess, it is American Typefaces. I use this in teaching and I also just collected this book because I love it. It's from 1934, so yeah, it cost me five whole dollars. And it is a fantastic, fantastic little book. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. More Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. This was a gift and that's wonderful. I'm still always grateful. The revised edition. I've got some movies here. Page one inside the New York Times. Uh, Old Farmer's Almanac. A lovely collection of Shirley Jackson. And of course my Joe Hill Full Throttle book, which I, it's gotta be read. So there you have it. Every single one of the books in my office. Oh, and Shadows and Tall Trees. I just got that. I don't know where to put it. I have to read it and then make room for it. So there you have it. A miscellaneous stack of stuff and more things. I hope you enjoyed this part of the bookshelf tour. It took us eight videos to get through just the books that are in my office. It won't be that long when we move upstairs and maybe creep some of Chris's books too. We shall see. So thank you very much for watching. And if there's anything here that piqued your interest that you've picked up and added to your shelf, let me know and have an ooky spooky day.